Yeah, Texting me today. Like, uh, can we maybe get on this one? Yeah, awful. Hello, and welcome to this workshop with the Berwick Planning Board, Berwick Select Board, and Envision Berwick. Uh, we have members of all committees here, and the chairman's of all three here. Um, town manager, code enforcement, um, and members of the public. Let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, uh, I am Noah Cobb, I am the select board chairman. Jeremy Caston, I'm the chair of Envision Berwick. I'm Michael Rue, I am the planning board chair. James Melissimo, Berwick town manager. Irish Griffith, Berwick Code Enforcement Officer. Jerry Grabo, Planning Board. Cyrus Morgan, Envision Berwick. Cameron Holadic, Planning Board. Tom Wright, Select Board. Phil Roy, Vice Chair for the Planning Board. Mike Latterer, Select Board. Mike Pendergast, Select Board. Um, yeah, so a great mix of everybody. Um, but before we start, public comment. Please come. Uh, well, I was going to say, come forward. Come, come yeah, right up they, and, uh, have a seat. I can, yeah. We can make room for you. Just uh, state your name and address, and we'll have a. We'll hear what you have for us. My name is Paul Bouvier. Can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Play to Sarah by meaning that we led to the mission. The lady was ordered way back when, and all those section uh, article article eight has performance standards for all kinds of things, including. Putting nursing homes, a few funeral parlors, and motels. We didn't have anything, gas stations, or convenience so stores. And when I learned about that, I felt bad because <laughs> it partially at fault. But um, I'd like to suggest that the town be proactive. You get the rumors that this is a gas station over on Route 4 plant land. And it's in the res residential side of the Route 4 industrial corridor. Which is fine, but a gas station we should have a um, paragraph in Article 8 at the end that defines specific, specific performance. Recording in progress. Uh, to control gas station. And I know there are generic performance standards in the ordinance, but there's no specific ones. And God knows gas stations should have some form performance. Standards. So, I think there's enough time to plan ahead and add some before the, the November, November vote. I'd like to ask the planning board and the selectmen consider adding a section in 
Section 8, performance status for a gas station and that could be so because most gas stations that are built today are built not only to sell gas but to sell be beer and things of that nature. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. I'll inch back to sit down. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. So, I'm Pat Bovier, um, and I'm also on Six Country Lane. And um, I think just to make it clear, we were hoping that, um, well, we had confidence that the planning board wanted to put in some specific standards, uh, performance standards for gas stations, convenience stores, car washes, things like that that would be coming down the line. Um, and we were hoping that initially, since we know we can't get it into the warrant article in time for the people to vote on it, that we were hoping that um, the planning board could uh, plan on um, the conditions that they would want to put on a gas station and then they would at this point equal the performance standards. So, um, you know, like you could develop conditions for this particular thing and hopefully that would go um, into the, the actual performance standards when another warrant article could be could come out. Um, plus, of course, there will probably be some additional conditions just because the nature of whatever the gas station or convenience store is going to be. There will probably be some particular things in addition um, to the performance stand standards that are developed. So that was a way to um, hopefully, um, <coughs> since we couldn't react in time, because we didn't know in time to um, do anything with the town vote, that that was something. So something else that I was just hoping that um, things that, a couple things that you, we've, of course, we've been thinking of this. You guys probably haven't been thinking about any of this yet. <laughs> but possible things about performance standards in addition to all the ones that you are, are already in place and the usual <laughs> ones. Um, things about this particular gas station at the end of Blackberry Hill Road um, would be the distance from public and private water supplies, like the South Berwick Wells, and then how far from the well, um, the wells from surrounding people. Um, some kind of insurance or bonding to cover future liability issues. Um, aesthetics um, of the building, since this is on the, shall I say, the residential end of the um, RCI district, <clears throat> you have a lot of um, residences instead of businesses at that end. And um, living on Blackberry Hill Road, we consider that our neighborhood. And so we would like to see um, aesthetics be a big part of whatever's put up there and it would fit, hopefully fit into the neighborhood. And our neighborhood would include Circuit Road, Pond Road, um, coming out of South Berwick, Blackberry Hill Road, and um, I guess even up to um, uh, the Wentworth Road and that area. Um, of course, I, I'm not even gonna go here for very long, but the dangerous traffic conditions, just. I know that's already under study, um, but um, it's very important, I think, to realize that there are school buses that go through that intersection. It's not just cars. And also, at this point, tractors. So I think it's a kind of a unique intersection to be considering when um, we're thinking of things. Also, maybe the number of pumps. I don't, I've never looked at any gas station requirements, just some kind of, if there's anything general about the number of pumps mm -hmm. and how big an area or whatever, that's probably all part of it. And then a big concern for us um, at this end of the road, um, at Blackberry Hill Road, and 
uh, that end of Route 4 is um, the farmland and the soils. And we're very concerned about the runoff um, from a gas station and the pollution that could could occur. Um, I don't know if, if it would occur just regularly or if it would be if there was an accident. But um, I think I believe that's prime farmland soil there, and it would be <clears throat> very important for um, us to consider the fact that that could be ruined forever. Something. Then um, a, a neighborhood convenience store. That's something else kind of missing in the land use ordinance. Um, we have a a definition for land, a neighborhood convenience store, um, but that's about it. Um, uh, there's some size thing, uh, a size piece in there, and um, but uh, okay. one thing to consider would be the alcohol sales. Uh, what kind of alcohol sales? If there were going to be alcohol sales, and again, the aesthetics, something similar to fit into the residential part of that of the road there. You're not business yet down there until you get up further, and so it would be nice to, if our like we have the kind farms, they've done a really nice aesthetic job of fitting into, I think things, and if we could have whatever is going next to that and there to be something similar to the residential part of the part of that. So I know it's kind of interesting. Um, I was talking to Paul about neighborhood, and I was saying, gosh, you know, most people think their neighborhood is part of their subdivision or something like that, but for us, our neighborhood is um, Blackberry Hill Road, <laughs> out under Route 4, across onto Circuit Road, onto Pond Road, up further um, onto um, the Wentworth Road and the long, old Blackberry Hill Road. Um, I can't remember the name at the moment but <clears throat> so that to us is our neighborhood and so it's different than thinking of a little neighborhood I guess we live in a big neighborhood because it's a rural area so just some things hopefully that you know when you're developing your performance standards you won't um, <coughs> forget about some of these things that I've mentioned so. thank, thank you thank you um, just one thing, Paul Bovert, I think we figured out was the longest serving planning board member in the United States um, at the time that he stopped serving on our board over 45 years, right? 44. <laughs> then he got bit by that damn tick. Um, anyway, so uh, when, he, when they called me to, just to talk about this, from a land use perspective, we don't have a gas station definition. Um, so I think for planning board, that would be a first order of business. Um, and then because that is not a defined use, there is section 6.1.2, which goes over omitted uses and says that in the event that a proposed use is not specifically identified in the tables, the code enforcement officer shall select the listed use, which most closely resembles the proposed use in impact and intensity, and then basically use those performance standards um, and in cases where no listed use is reasonably construed, then basically the code enforcement officer may determine that that's not permitted. And obviously that's not going to um, come up. But with the omitted uses um, regulation that we have in here, that just leaves a lot up to uh, somebody else's ideas. And so I think defining it and getting some performance standards. And we've got a really good, what, 8.6.7? we got a spot in the land use ordinance ready for it. So that's all. Thank Name you. and address? Oh, Nicole, <laughs> Nicole Fecto. I live on Wingate Lane. Thank you. I mean, I know who you are, but... <laughs> you don't look on Facebook. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, that is the end of the public comment. Um, first item on the agenda is the cannabis license cap. James? This is an annual exercise, um, kind of... Part of when we put in the cap, one of the promises was to revisit it just because it has a general idea we want to be pro, pro market and see where we're at with the industry. Um, I can defer to the planning board chair. I don't really have much more to, much more to add. Okay. Um, I know we've had a question about another license coming in once, um, but I kind of have something to say that um, 
I've been reading Maine's Constitution, and Section 1, the very first thing in the Declaration of Rights, is all men are born equal, free and independent, and have a certain natural, inherent, and inalienable rights, among which are those of enjoying and defending life, liberty, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and of pursuing and obtaining safety and happiness. So my thought is happiness, if someone has a piece of property and they want to put a cannabis store on their property, if it makes them happy, they should be able to do it. I mean, that's pretty basic right there. Well, I agree I agree to it I, yeah, yeah, I agree to an extent however yeah. if pornography makes someone happy should we open a strip club I, right. I mean apply the same standard across the board I feel like we oh, could we all have, we have standards we constitution have constitution that <laughs> just support arbitrary I mean that's a little bit you don't really believe that whatever makes somebody happy is also good for our town having or a concert in my legal. backyard every well, day have, I happy, wouldn't just would make my neighbors happy I mean well, I mean, we all took oaths to, to uphold the Constitution. Sure. And if we already have it and the state says that we can have it, why are we trying to limit that? Well, how, what would you say to towns that don't allow it at all? Is that... Well, I think the, they're going against it. Okay. So, all of them are in good company. Um, but, no, um, we have... How many licenses? No, that's good, that's what I was going to ask. Is what uh, what do we have? What the caps? Is the different categories? Let me grab that actual number. It's um, let me grab the actual. I think number. I, I, my recollection is something that like, there's twenty or twenty one total licenses out right now. Nineteen. Nineteen. Thank yeah. you. Um, and not all of them are being used right now. That's true. Not all of them are, are active. Um, when we discussed the the cap, um, my. Uh, my argument was that the cap was, uh, I'm not in favor of a cap personally. I, I believe that the market will bear what it bears. But um, I was in favor of the cap because it was a temporary measure because we had a lot coming in and we needed to sort out the details. We needed to know like, like how this was going to affect the town, how it was going to look, you know, where they were going to be spaced. You know, we wanted to have things actually open up before we just let out another, you know, 20 licenses or something like that, you know. Because at that point, we had basically nothing open, just a bunch of people applying for licenses, and we didn't actually know what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. We also wanted to make sure there were no holes in the land use ordinances, things that people were going to exploit or misuse, put, play, put them in places that, you know, weren't zoned for it. Um, so... Um, it was always meant to be a temporary measure to make sure that we got all things in a row and then expanded outward or eliminated eventually. Um, so um, that's certainly a discussion that we can we can have in terms of pros and cons. So, how, if, many, how many license or licenses are currently not being used? Do we know? Do we have that number? It's well, it goes by. Conditional uses, mm -hmm. so in, in terms of um, pretty much effectively, I think all of them except for one. Is and that's the biggest one. Moving it's, forward. It's, it's I think it's retail. Kind of it usually a roll license. No, the, there's a roll one that... down next to Collins Sheet Metal. Yep. That's not being used. That's the biggest one. That's the biggest one. That is the biggest there's one. Street, street buildings in there, so that's yep. not being used. Yep. And they have up to ten buildings. But not all of them approved for... All of them are approved. For so marijuana? 12 yeah, buildings. 12 so buildings, yeah. 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 Oh, I yeah. thought it was only a couple No, it's like 60,000 square feet. Right. Yeah. But right? The issue with that next to Collins... It's all licensed under was, one, though. I think the issue was with the one next to Collins, when we were all talking about it, was the owner didn't know how he was going to handle his license, whether it was all the buildings, because there were going to be different players, and yeah. each of the buildings was going to be under his, or what he was going to do. Yeah. I think that was what and, was thrown and up. And what we here. made them do is it has to all be under one. Under one. Right. So, so if the, cur uh, if the current sense. licenses that are out there are not all being used, what what's the demand signal to say that we need more? The cap is on conditional uses. Mm -hmm. So someone can have a conditional use and not have a license. Yeah, as long as they keep paying for that, right? They have to pay for it. They're going to keep their conditional use active. Right. Right. Which, so in the case of... The one next to Collins Sheet, they yep. started construction, they've completed one. Now, building. also as for town revenue, aren't um, cannabis 
is one of the highest paying for taxes? Um, in terms of in terms of industries, it's one of the, it's probably storage facilities is one. Right, but you know, right behind there. that it's is up. is cannabis. Yeah, it's about in terms of property taxes and license revenue, it's it's approaching six figures. Yeah. Now, in terms of demand, I mean, we can't accurately gauge demand mm -hmm. because we have the cap. Right. If we if since we have a restriction that says we're not going to be approving anymore, we're not. I mean, people just are able to look that up pretty easily and go, that, yeah. I've gotten one call about it. If, if, if you want to come up to the microphone. Board. Yeah. I've gotten one call in the six or seven months that I've been here. One call. And I said, I'm sorry. We're not, yeah. we're not taking anymore. I've, yeah. I've received four. And we've had the guy from next door come into one of our meetings and ask about it for downtown for an adult use but we told them no. I've received about four, maybe five, I think, but I think the fifth one was the one that I had called Dave, the first one. But I've received several from people wanting to know if Berwick was accepting any more. Um, but we're gonna try and come to town. And in terms of the actual cap number, um, it's slightly arbitrary because what we essentially happened was we had the influx of applications, we had an influx of people coming in, and basically we said, um, at this point, no more until we get everything sorted out. So it's not like we came up with a number and said 19 is the number or 20 is the number and then there's no more after this. Right. We, we just said, yeah. after, t after today, we're not taking any more until we see how this pans out. Is it sorted out? That's a good question. Is it sorted out? <laughs> James, what do you feel? Well, if you, if my opinion would be, I think we have enough... I think we have enough storefronts. I mean, Mike may disagree, but I think there might be room to open up for a, a cultivation facility or two if they're zoned in the right places. I think those can be, um, if we take a look at the performance standards, really tight in and holding on, on on where we want them and try to minim minimize the, you know, facilities trying to be jammed in areas where we didn't intend them to go. Um, I think. They're, they're high high property value, and I think at a smaller scale, they have less externalities. Yeah, especially if it's a cultivation facility. There's limited people coming in and out. Um, in commercial areas, especially in the RCI zone, it would be a perfect perfect thing to add to it more. I know, I know we have setbacks for <coughs> for that, which is, what, 1,500 feet? 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet, okay. Well, that's what happened on Pond Road. That's not a thousand feet from the from the setback, yeah, right? They are. Yeah, they are. The, it's yeah. a thousand feet. Oh yeah, it's a thousand feet. And that's too close from Kind Farms. How is that too close? From that house? Oh no, not from, from no. each other. Well, from each other. No, it's not from a house. It's from each other. So from Kind Farms to the Eleven Pond Road one, it is a thousand feet. Yeah, right, right. But what about from a house? A setback from a house? I think it's. I think we put in either a hundred feet or that's let me, too close. Let me, let me get. Well, we put it. So in, we put it after. In keeping with the the theme we started on, which is somebody's right to pursue happiness. How much are we hearing from people? How much are you guys? Because I wouldn't necessarily know that their happiness and their home is being impinged upon by facilities. Is what? What's the feedback on that? They got the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> Very little. Uh, Very little. In, in all honesty, usually there's usually there's that up like in the beginning, and once something's up, unless Irish is hearing something, once it's there, a lot of times they say they're they're I've, actually the best neighbors. I've <laughs> had one. I've had only one complaint, and it was uh, somebody that was due to change their filters, so there was some odor emanating in the neighborhood. I sent them a letter, and problem solved. And that's it. Yep. No, yeah. we've had questions on lights, Jeremy, lighting, mm -hmm. yeah. odor. Um, let's say the people on Route Nine, Tom. Right, I'm trying to think of. Yeah. Uh, it's half a dozen yeah, people at one on point he had a couple things there. going on up there. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't right, and now <clears throat> when he built the last section of it, we made him go to the new town standards. He was grandfathered in before, so he didn't have to have the odor mitigation and stuff like that. But when he built the last building for that, it's now up up to the codes that we have, up to the standards. The one building, but not all of them. No, all of them. All of them. All of them. That was a condition. All of it had to be under those yep. those standards now. See, so that's the kind of thing that the 
the cap was put in place for. It's like we right. have these problems, now we can create standards yeah. and we right. can but I remember fix them. Remember when we were talking this is a while ago, I remember talking to you about how uh, was it uh, in Elliot, was it dirt uh, sweet dirt. Sweet dirt. They have those nice greenhouses and you commented about the lights, how they look really nice. Well, we can't even have that here because of our standards. Why? Because it's, it's, it's yeah. We have a light restriction. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have to be downward facing, and they can't yeah. they can't be they have to have a dark, on dark, them sky dark, dark sky dark sky. We, we can't stand. have lights in a greenhouse. No, we no. can't have lights emitting up. outside yeah, of it. It's gotta go down. Yep. They use the lights to grow. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. but they'd have to cover it. They would have to if so the greenhouse. So that's yeah. something that you know can be looked at. Yeah. I mean, if it's, you don't have to, even if the, say they get one for a permit to do that, yep. you guys can say, okay, yeah, you can do that and start to change the standard. Right, we'd have Same to change the standard. Same thing with the gas standard. station. Yep. We're going to have a gas station go in, okay? Yep. Cats and all things, aesthetics, all that stuff should be figured out to give the guy a permit, turning yep. lanes, whatever. Right. We do it right then with him or whoever. Yep. Or condition it. Yeah. Small business doesn't want to wait forever for a right. couple of years while we decide to. Right. Mm -hmm. Come right. up with some standards. Go away. Right. No, I agree with that too. <coughs> I think that just I just I think the the cap came from the planning. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So no, it, no it, I remember that. It was it was. It I was it, one. It I was back one of two that were against <laughs> it. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll still be against it. I was probably one of the it, really For a free so. market, <laughs> we should be able to have as many <laughs> that dictates that is needed, and the ones that are going to fail are the ones that are going to fail. And and I I I do believe that is correct. Uh, and the only reason I supported the cap when it came back around was because it was meant to be temporary, and it was meant to. Um, just help us patch any holes that might be existing in our current uh, in our current standards. And um, don't you think it's still temporary? I still think it's temporary. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's still temporary. I mean, so we're well, not being over, mean, we're not being overwhelmed with people coming in looking for permits to grow. No, but I'm saying that like, when we, we start can, that point, we then can, we can talk about extending yeah. it. Well, I'm saying we can, like, well, obviously not now. This is not a meeting where we're going to take any votes or anything mm -hmm. like that. But I mean, in the future, we can, uh, like, I would like to see the restrictions loosened or lifted until it becomes an issue again, or maybe it doesn't become an issue at all. Yeah. Maybe we we overcame the peak, you know. But if we lift the restrictions and twenty new applications show up on the desk, then we're going to have to. You're going to be the meat grinder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, even at the standards now, we can't have another um, store in the new downtown. Good. Yeah. No, no, that's your opinion, though. That's my opinion. I, my opinion is we should have one in there. Because we got one right over there. <laughs> the standards, well, another, that building, one of to the standards to those buildings are a lot Another different. issue to take into account, though, if we're going to talk about standards, and, and I know we, mm -hmm. we don't talk about it a lot, but they, they had a pretty high-profile break-in at, at one of our facilities in town. That yeah. led across a multi-state car chase, mm -hmm. and we have very limited resources when it comes to our law enforcement. And, you know... How much more are we willing to invest if we are bringing in a business that could be attracting a criminal element? And granted, I will I will concede that that may have been an isolated incident, but that was a pretty high profile isolated incident that directly affected our police department and police departments in neighboring communities, and it affected public safety. And so I, that so I think any I, any performance standards moving forward should have. A, a requirement for security, whether that's physical security, i.e. barriers, uh, you know, shatterproof glass, whatnot, because Sorry, that stuff's worth oh, yeah, money. Sorry. It's well, I know, I know with Kind Farms, they put in a, like a $60,000 security system. Like there's... After? No, no, this is before. when they were building it. They, yeah. they put in a huge security system. And they system. still got robbed. <laughs> well, and but they still got caught. Couple of farms gets robbed. Oh, yeah. Gas stations yeah, yeah. get robbed. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it, that's it, more frequent. It's going to get robbed. Yeah. The, so. the, the reality is that that is a pretty isolated incident. We ask yeah. the we ask of the police chief every time it comes up, every time a new license is up for renewal, if there's been any you know trouble, if there's been any you know if there's not if there anything that they could do to improve their security, things like that, and. 99 times out of 100, it's there's no issues. An alarm went off by itself or whatever. We show up and, you know, they they know where to patrol. And these places have security lights and security doors. And 
pretty. They, I mean, I, I get like. I mean, we had a murder a couple of weeks ago. Like that was. It, it was. It's jarring because it's a completely out of the ordinary yeah. experience. Right. It's not like New York City or Chicago or you know anything where it's like those sort of things happen on a daily basis or mm -hmm. you know like. So like it, yeah, it. it if it's I like, could yeah. just talk about the cap is is the other thing we have to remember is when we put this cap in place is Berwick was only one of the only towns in the area where we were allowing it right. and we were afraid we were going to get overrun. Right. Now, as I drove up 202 in Lebanon for the first time in a while and I was surprised at how many were there. Yeah. You go down Elliot, so that's when we put the cap in is back when we were the only town allowing it and we were and worried Sacred has, a, has a lot of cultivation going on right now too so yeah. it's it's, it's it's absorbing some of that away from us yeah. as well. No, and as far as the storefronts, um, <clears throat> I, I every time I talk to the chief and the captain, practically I ask him, and I ask him specifically about the one across the street, and they said, other than parking problems on Sullivan Street, they haven't had any issues there. No, so the idea that these are bringing criminal elements into town, I don't buy that. You know, is any time there's any money transacted anywhere. It attracts the criminal element. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. no, and and that's one thing I want to I want to point out to the planning board too is you know you, you guys go through everything to put the licenses in and you, and you do your due diligence and you do a great job at putting those conditions in and getting them up there, but then they come before us and when they do you know we go through James we go through the police department and we go through those questions to make sure when that license is up or when that renewal is up we're asking those questions and you know like we said I mean for the most part these are the best businesses and, and people that we have in, in town mm -hmm. is what we get back you know from the police department they, they hear nothing. Right. They they tend to be very very receptive to criticism, very respectful of the process because they want to be here. Yeah, they know, know there's a and they know market. yeah and they know <laughs> there is a huge market. They, yeah, I mean it beat lobster. <laughs> yeah. Beat lobster. Can I have the whole well, stop selling lobster? <laughs> Irish, what do you got? So I, I have two things I want to say. First of all, I'm, I'm not even going to ask if any of you have been into any of the pot shops because that's probably a don't ask, don't tell thing. <laughs> but as your code officer, I have gone into a couple of them to talk to them about things that you know, you know, issues with lighting and um, particularly the. Silver Farm, that Silver Therapeutics, and it, because I don't have a like a town uniform, I walk in and they treat me just like every other customer. And every shop in here has checked my license and swiped my license, so they're also tracking whoever's going in. So that's good because mm -hmm. that, to me, if somebody's getting their license scanned, they're less likely to be um, a nefarious type. But it seems like the conversation in this, I just want to ask, like, where everybody's standing here, because it kind of seems like the conversations are going all or stay where we're at, like free for all or stay where we're at. What are the possibilities of just increasing it by five or ten? And then. Or giving it another date, like another year of yeah. open, and then. Because, I, I mean, mean at a thousand feet, you can only put in so many. It's not like we're going to yeah. put in another. 30 of them, but they're I mean, not, they're not going to fit. If we raise the cap by like five and see what happens and see if we all of a sudden, you know, word gets out that we've raised it by five and all of a sudden our office is Well, see, that, that makes sense on paper. The only problem, uh, two problems with that. One, you know, any number we pick is just going to be arbitrary. arbitrary mm -hmm. yes. And two, I mean, we have businesses that take three license spots. You know, they go, they go, we have cultivation, we have adult use, we have medical, you know, and so if we only have five slots available, we could have one business come in and take more than half the slots mm -hmm. available to us. You know what I mean? That's true. So what if we took a hybrid approach and, and said not to exceed X amount of licenses and then get it on the ballot and let the, the townspeople speak for, for what they want or what they don't want in their town? So we, just, we, we make a determination and say, okay, not to exceed, what's the number, three more, five more licenses, and if everybody's in agreement, we put it on the ballot and we let the people decide. Again, that uh, it, well, any number we pick is going to just be we're going to pull it out of the air. Correct, but, right. but, but, it, but it's fair. It's, it's going to be fair to the town anyway, and it's so, fair and it's equitable. equitable. Well, so. no, the town didn't vote on the, the moratorium. It, Not really. The select board. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was. A, it was brought forward. We voted on it. We were able to put it in place, and we we're able to remove it as well. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, again, it, it, 
a, a, a maybe an arbitrary number is the solution, but you know, I, 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 the whole problem of the moratorium in general, and again, this is the issue with the more the, the, the cap, cost, not a moratorium. Yeah, the, the, the cap, <laughs> whatever. On um, the same thing, the idea for the, the cap on gas stations or whatever is like we don't want to deter future business mm -hmm. just because they see it, you know, on the books. You know, we might put a cap in place because we want we're worried about this one, and then deter two other ones that are looking at, you know, putting things in place. Mm -hmm. So it, I lean toward, you know, opening it back up and letting Mark letting it fall it. and see, you know, keeping an eye on it and just seeing if it, you know, if we get a big run or not or. How much cap do we have left? How much space do we have left? None. It's, None. it's, 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 all, been, it's, it's all, all been taken up. And it's been closed for a couple years now. So there's yeah. 19 licenses. Yeah. If um, there, it, I mean, would it be reasonable? But they're not operating. It's not yeah, 19. there's a right. couple that aren't right. operating. Right. A couple that aren't. So I'm going to quote Tom on something right now. And I remember this. This is burned in my, my brain. Berwick needs to be welcoming to all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Plain and simple. And I think the more we keep it simple, the easier it's going to be. We have the standards that we can enforce. We have a code enforcement officer that can enforce those issues. I think that taking the cap off at this point would probably be, in my opinion, the best thing we could do. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is even if we take the cap off, if all of a sudden we do see a rush, we can reinstate the cap. That's right. You know, Does and, that sort of thing ever happen? What that? Yeah. Where you, well, yeah. Where, 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 where well, well, how about any other industry? Turn it on and then quickly turn it back well, off. Well, how about any other industry in Berwick? Yeah, well, no, yeah. that's it. I, I can't think of anything. Well, we yeah. stopped building permits for a while, then. Oh, yeah, Nobody back in the 80s. Yeah, that was before my time. Yeah, that was back <laughs> in the 80s. For one year. I was two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, then there, then there was, we only had, you know, 20 building permits a year or whatever. People camped out for three or four days out here. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I heard yeah. that was New Year's, right? Yeah. Everybody spent New Year's Eve yep. waiting in line. Yep. So. I'll say even, even with that permit cap, there's still like 60 houses built that year, so... That's more than two or three. Yeah, times. I think I, I think I know the the chart that you sh showed us a while back of like yeah. the, the the building boom in Berwick, where all of a sudden it just spikes for no reason. It's like you know, more, more houses than people in the town. <laughs> um, but I think it's something that we can definitely revisit in a meeting, maybe have a public hearing about. Yeah. It, get us some more information about you know exactly mm -hmm. how many. Phone calls you've had requesting it, and you know, go forward with that and find. I mean, if you, you have other other people asking, are they asking whether it's a grow or a, a storefront or anything? Or um, I've been asked about marijuana. They usually call. Most of them that have called have called and said, "Hi, I'm just wondering if Barwick is accepting any more marijuana grow facilities." No. So it looks like growth is the, the issue. I haven't had anybody specifically ask about a storefront to me. Dave's approaching, so. And the two people that I had contact me was about starting a storefront and starting at a different place. So yeah. that, that didn't produce marijuana at the time. Also state that anytime cannabis has been involved on a vote, it's always passed in Berwick. I'm not saying that it still will, but it's been passed by a huge majority. To, to, mm -hmm. quote, to quote Eleanor Murphy, <laughs> the first time around, she said, she said, I didn't know Berwick had so many Stonies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, How many of is, them lived through the 60s? It is a drastic change okay. on volume of people who vote, too. Mm -hmm. Any time that cannabis is involved. So. So. so, yeah, we can work that into a future select board meeting, let people come and talk yeah, to us about it. About it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get, make, make sure we have all the information about it. If you have any information on people that have reached out to you about it, you, well, when we actually figure out when we're doing it, you're welcome to invite them, and they can come talk to us and see what their intents and intru issues are. I mean, I'll be honest; I will start asking contact information going forward. <laughs> but in the past, it's just been sorry. Yeah, yeah we're full. Kind of, no, it makes no, sense. No, 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 at the that, end. <laughs> and that's I assume that. But I just mean like if yeah. you, you happen to have any, you know, I might have some in my. I do sometimes jot notes when people are. Yeah. So I'll see what I can find. I guess Dave, yeah. same for you too. If you have anybody call you, just. Yeah, just something, you know, 
not not next not next meeting, which no. is tomorrow. <laughs> <but Right. we're, laughs> maybe, maybe not even two weeks, but you know, soon we can put it you know on the agenda and um, have it have a discussion about it. Um, the next thing on the agenda is moratorium and process. Just want to go over um, the definition of a moratorium and that um, a moratorium is adopted by the town's legislative body. So that would be town meeting. You know, it was kicked, kicked around where it was a, uh, if the select board can do it. Um, basically, if we wanted to put, put together a moratorium, I think it would kind of be a collaborative effort, ultimately forwarded by the town but it goes to town vote. It's effectively an ordinance. And the moratorium can't be indefinite either, can they? No. It's a maximum of 180 days. Right. So With even one extension, if, right? So even if we did put a moratorium on the ballot for, for, for June, it would only last until the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Right, and I would recommend holding a special town meeting if we went down the moratorium route um, because we received a traffic movement permit for the gas station. I'm only not getting into specifics too much for the applicant, but just to say that it's more than just a rumor. We know it's coming and a traffic movement permit uh, is related to planning board, obviously, but it's very much like a site plan location permit where it happens parallel to planning board. So it's not unusual to start seeing traffic movement or DEP permits. I don't believe it'll need a DEP permit. Um, and the traffic movement permit can take upwards of a year, where planning board could take a few months. One of the... The, the uh, traffic movement, is that is that talking about putting in a turning lane there and everything? That would be one of the considerations, yes. Um, a traffic movement permit, it's the highest level of... Uh, traffic permit that the EP or DOT has. Okay. And what if they don't? If the DOT says it's fine, I would believe that the planning board can condition it so as a requirement. All of it. Okay. As long as you make a fine, I mean, I think making a finding on vehicular access that the proposed layout shall provide for safe access and egress from public roads, and if the planning board makes a determination that safe egress cannot be achieved without the turning lane. And it says it right here. The proposed site layouts shall provide receive access and egress from public and private roads by providing adequate location, numbers and controls of access points, including site distances, turning lanes. So this would be a turning lane onto, onto Blackberry, right? Right before, it would be, well. It, it, depends, right. it depends on which way the lot's laid out. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, and this, in this case would be a well, it, it is also also is we've had enough you know studies and things done of that corridor already. You know that when we sat through with the state police five years ago was it mm -hmm. or so is um, you know and they state in, in the DOT in there says all these things would be a good idea is to have, but the state's not going to pay for it. No, they were gonna pay, right. <laughs> is, um, right. So right. this so is the this is the time when is. Put that back you know, I, I I have not paid too much attention to all of this, but this is a time when we make sure that our needs all along that stretch are taken care of. Yeah, you know, sure. if, it, if it you know turning lanes all the way up to Blackberry Hill Road and up to Pond Road, so be it. That's what we force them. The other, what James didn't say is the speed. It's fifty-five. Mm -hmm. Right. It can't be fifty-five if you're going to have this. I live there. Oh. I can't get out <laughs> on Pondra. I go down Circuit Road or I go around I've the other. I've been trying for 10 years to get the speed change. They won't that's, do it. That's the they they wanted to raise it. it. <laughs> uh, you can do it if enough people write to the DOT. My wife checked it out and complained. They have to come down and address it. And I would think the more curb cuts there are, the more... Right. The more well, that's well you, would, you would think, but we also well, have people getting walloped in their car pulling out of Kine Farms. We had a fatality there. We've had, uh, yeah. I mean, there's a member of this board who, who lost a loved one on that road. We've had, how many fatalities have we had on that road? You know, and, and I mean, it, it, it's, it's in our job description to ensure public safety. Right. And but again, we, have to be, we have to be cognizant of that and not just follow the almighty dollar. Yeah. 
It, it, un un unfortunately, you know, what Mark and I found from our meeting with the state police there is all of those accidents are driver error. It's not a matter of you yeah, know driver, other things. Driver uh, error, or one of them is drugs, huh? But yeah. if you even but, with driver error, but it, with, even right, with, no, even no, with driver no. error, if you reduce the speed, you reduce yeah. the impact, and the which thing is, is less. They're going to come up and tell you, Phil, when we reduce the speed to forty-five, then they're all going to go sixty-five to pass mm -hmm. everyone going. 45. Yeah, right. That's just well, an argument yeah, the yeah. state will give. I, I agree. What we need to do is put pressure on uh, state representatives mm -hmm. and our state senators. Um, well, and the because, people with the deep, when I was, the when deep, I was, when the I deep was, pockets who are going to develop out there, right. they, they should be. <laughs> when I, when I was in the legislature, campaign the state to make it we helped lower the speed limit on Cranberry Meadow Road mm -hmm. is by getting involved in it. So right. When they put in the ATM. They, Northeast Federal right. was forced to put in the turning lane. Right. So this would right. be the same type exactly. of thing. Exactly. So yeah. Let's force them to do it. Right. No problem. And then, you know, talking about the aesthetics and everything is, um, you know, we have the dark sky ordinance, so we have to control the lights and everything. Is it, yeah, like you said, yeah, make you it blend in as much in. as possible. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, we also, we also have like sign ordinances as well. Right. Too, yeah. right? So, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to be able to put up a giant gas sign, are they? Or, mm -hmm. No, I won't be able to have anything that's internally illuminated. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to have an electric, electronic. Huh. So wouldn't be able to have an electronic sign. Nope. No, well, the electronic no, message board. Already a bunch on the road. Why couldn't they? No, they, they, they were in before the standards were in. Once those mm -hmm. signs break, they can't replace them. Mm -hmm. They have to replace them with, with externally illuminated. If I could bring up a, a point about the moratorium and, and the reason I came and presented before the select board, um, and, and I was I was incensed about it, and and I will tell you that um, I felt that the planning board, um, you know, there was a sense of urgency placed on us to vote on that land use ordinance and get it through, and I understand that there's timelines involved, but I'm not completely deaf to to the comments of the townspeople and the townspeople who came here tonight to express their concerns with that, that type of business and its location. Um, and, and just based on that and based, we have to be sensitive to perceptions. And I'm not saying that anything was done inappropriately, but I'm just saying the fact that we voted on it and we didn't have performance standards for gas stations. And then immediately after that, we're saying, hey, there's a gas station on the horizon. Public perception of that we're opening ourselves up for fire. That's whether, not whether what we're going to do. That's not what will happen, Phil. We're going <clears> to, <throat> as he's building the gas station, yep. the permits, we're going to set the standards then. Yep. We're not going to do it after. We have to set it before he gets a permit. This is what you got to do. If you don't want to do that, mm -hmm. no permit. Absolutely. That's so so line. in that spirit, Mark, I would, I would challenge us to do our due diligence because we don't have a performance standard currently. Would it be reasonable to do a short-term moratorium until such a time the planning board and the select board can come up with what is a what is a good performance standard based on quantifiable information, not locally and nationally. What what is going to be right for Berwick? You know, you we're affecting groundwater potentially affecting groundwater in that area. That's on the Berwick and South Berwick town line. Public safety with regard to the traffic. Let's set some standards and let's take the time to do our due diligence and do it correctly. And if that looks like a moratorium, is that appropriate and is everybody agreeable? Well, as James says, we can't unilaterally put in the moratorium. It would have to go on the ballot, Correct. which is still totally possible. Um, and, and the town would have to approve it. So, I mean, it's not, you know, it, I'm of the mind that, I mean, the voters, you know, Typically, mm -hmm. they know what they want to do, yep. you know, and they only occasionally make something I think is a mistake, you know, but they, so... By electing us? <laughs> <that's true. laughs> Among other things. But, um, no, like, if, if it's a question of, like, you know, should we do it, should we not, it's something that's totally fine to put on to the voters and ask them what they think, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, we take ourselves out of the equation, they make the decision. If they decide against it, though... We need to be prepared for that eventuality mm -hmm. and just, you know, already be figuring out what standards we want and, you know, so that we're not caught because we thought it was going to pass or something like right. that, you know. Right. And again, well, they, it's only going to be six months worth 
I mean, so but, it, but it only gives us gets, breathing room. It only gives you to the beginning of 2024 to have all that set up. I mean, we'll have a, we'll have a, an election in January of 2024. Mm -hmm. So if do. you would just dump a half a million dollars into a lot on room four, yeah, how would you feel about that? I'd be upset. I mean, I would be. <laughs> I'd, be I'd be upset too. But one, I, I, I think what Pat and Paul so said earlier say do it, do about right. developing the conditions. I think we need to work <laughs> on know. our conditions for yeah. that said gas station, and then develop that into the performance standards. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how we did it with cannabis. Yeah. I mean, well, when that we, came through, here's a, we set on, our standards, and then that turned into our ordinances. There, I mean, there's one thing we got to remember, too, guys. We're in a workshop, too. We don't have a active permit in front of us, so we can't talk about a specific law. May I say so, something? Well, <laughs> let's, 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 let's put that up there first, too. Um, <laughs> I've been sitting here for... Um, I had a discussion with Lee J. Feldman, the town planner, about this, um, and he said, we can put in the, in the... We can put in the... When, we, when, when the... When the planning board approves it, we can put in conditions of approval. We can put in, you have to, you, want. We, you can't be within 500 feet of another residence. You can put that in there. If yeah. the planning board really feels like that, and that's got a good, every condition of approval has got to get voted on okay. by, the, by the planning board. Right. So maybe that passes, maybe it doesn't. That's, that's the temporary fix. And, and I, I think that's a, a good approach, but I would use solar as, as an example, right? When I first started on the planning board, we had a solar project before us, and I didn't know anything about solar. So I started digging and looking at historical stuff and looking at, hey, how did what, how'd this pan out in Europe where now they ban solar? <laughs> and you start looking at the ripple effect of that industry, right? So if we are not in front of this issue, and we allow a gas station to go in and we don't establish performance standards that work for us, then we deserve whatever outcome we get. And it's the same thing with solar. And we got smart on solar, a little smarter on it. We still haven't really developed performance standards, but we have instilled um, conditions for, for and applicants. Every time that they come disposal. in, it's gotten more strict. Every time it's a little more strict, but I don't want to learn the hard lessons we, like we learned on solar. Let's yeah. get ahead of it. Um, if it makes you feel any better, <clears throat> I worked as you guys know in several municipalities and uh, I did look after that last meeting and not a single one of them has performance standards for a gas station. Yeah. North Berwick does. North Berwick might but that's not one that I was hired by. Yeah. Old Wells. Orchard Old Orchard yeah. does not Saco does, does not Wells does not the state's so the state's so got, the got a very I'm just strict saying, we're not you know, we're not and, the I, and I think that don't have it is all I'm saying. We're no, no, correct. And, and I think so if we look at it's not like a massive oversight on our part. It's not. Mm -hmm. I don't want you guys all feeling like, oh my God, we've missed the, the boat because it's just not something that most most municipalities are handling it with the the thing that Nicole brought up. With and, and that's what I said when, when it was so first brought up is that it's not that, that that these standards exist at a state and federal mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. that we have DEP and main DEP <laughs> and we have we already have regulations on gas stations and you know how they are built how they're designed how their tanks work and stuff like that so if we don't have standards then it just defaults to the state and federal level which they already do have the standards it's similar to when we replaced our oil tank out here. Yeah. yeah. We had, oh my gosh. Like, close that's to the river, we had to follow all the rules. Well, we had to do this. When, 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 when I came on to Envision, I was made to understand that, that the mission was to back up the comp plan. And that the comp plan backs up the surveys. And so I've spent a lot of time reading the surveys going back, you know, qu quite a ways. And when I'm sort of stuck on something, with, with Envision, we go back to that. And we look at what those surveys have told us and how they've, and I'm on the comp plan too, and, and the comp plan takes its marching orders from the surveys, and then that becomes all of our sort of marching orders, right? That, that, that what we've set out as the goals of the town become our goals, I think. Outside of, outside of the, 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 obviously, we, we, we also have a, 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 you know, we have our constitution, we have our state constitution, those are all important, but, but also understanding the tone and the tenor of our town and what, what the citizens want 
is a huge component of it. And just because something works at, and, and is regulated at the state level doesn't necessarily mean that it's also correct for Berwick. Just like what, what's going to work for Old Orchard Beach, which has a huge tax base mm -hmm. from tourism that we don't have. This is a very different oh, town I'm, to, to... I'm more of that. I was just saying mm -hmm. we, we're sure, not... Sure, sure, sure. It's not an insult. I'm just saying, that of course, that, that you know, people are going to get up the road and you're going to have a gas station before you go to Old Orchard Beach. But it doesn't... It's going to be different here as it should be. And mm -hmm. it should always be a consideration what our citizens feel strongly they want out of us. And... and what we can deliver to them, and whether it's it's gas stations everywhere or, or no gas stations, performance standards or a moratorium, we always have to look at, at what they've asked us to do. This is why we're here. It, you know, going back to that is the comp plan, the planning board is Route 4 has always been our commercial industrial corridor. If we're going to do anything like this, this is where we want it. That's what we've said in the past. Is you know, is 236, Route 9, and Route 4 are going to be our commercial areas. You know, they're the state roads. They're where we want it. Route 4 has the most traffic. <clears throat> is you know, this is where we want to put that stuff. Is no, we're not going to have it over on School Street. We're not going to have it on Cranberry Meadow Road. We want to have it where we already have in place, you know, the commercial and industrial zone. And as far as the moratorium is, uh, I, I'm not in very favor of one personally. I think that we can handle this through our process to do it correctly. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, is although there isn't a permit, there's nothing in writing or anything. You know, everybody knows <laughs> that this gas station, a gas station, has been thought about. If we put a moratorium on now, that owner is going to come back and says, "I'm already in the pipeline. You can't stop me." Well, so we got another issue with the moratorium, and I'm so. sorry, I'm impatient. Yeah, James was going to take this, but um, part of the you know the lovely regulations here. Um, a more for a moratorium it has to be a necessity and it must be needed because the application of existing comprehensive plans land use ordinances or regulations or other applicable laws if any is inadequate to prevent serious public harm from residential commercial or industrial development in the affected geographic area and I don't think that's going to pass the straight face test no. No. because they're regulated on the state level they're regulated Correct. on the federal level and we can regulate them through our land use ordinances, so I literally don't think that if we put a moratorium through that it would, that it's going to pass. The Correct, and, and I think that's with anything that we got to be we got to be cautious of is you know <coughs> people could appeal and people could take the town to court and, and appeal it there, and you know yeah, we don't have enough to stand on. And now we're just we, now we're just, we now we're just wasting taxpayer dollars, and we still lose. Exactly. You know, so now we just cost the town more money, yeah. Actually, and we're not losing side of it. My question about the the legality of moratorium is. We don't have a definition of what a gas station is in our in our land use ordinance. <laughs> How do we put a moratorium on something we don't have a definition of? Oh. Yeah. We have some in the town. <laughs> well, but, but but it's not defined in our land right. use ordinance. Right. So so we we just we put gas stations on the moratorium list, and then people say I'm building something. Oh, it's not a gas station. It's a fuel depot. Whatever. We don't have, <laughs> you, you don't have a definition for what it is, yeah. so I can do. It I think it's cause them to know. Fair point, well yeah. made. And, 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 and I think you know, and, and, we're not and lawyers. Listening to, I mean, all due respect, we're just a bunch of people. Oh, right. Conversation. <laughs> if we just have a lawyer, they can help us with that. That's not. I, I wouldn't. I don't think we can just stop because oh. we're not able to. No, this is well, well, I mean, no but we have actually, a pro but we have a process in place, and if you listen to what Lee Jay is, that's where we can use the planning board and use the tools we have to say this is the condition we want to put on this. This is what we the neighbors are saying we want to put this here. This is what we're and you set those conditions. And and most of these builders, you know, they, they've done this and trust me, in, in other towns that are more strict than us, some that are less strict. Yeah. And they're they're gonna come and meet halfway or, or work that way too because they want to they want to be good neighbors. They don't want to come in and be you know they want to make money so they're not gonna come in here and build something that the town doesn't want. You know so we don't even really take care of what we have. 
<laughs> Two gas stations in town now. And one, one of the tanks are Shit expiring. Bum. Yeah. Right. Shit bum Cumberland Farms. It always looks like hell. Yep. Gas station down on the corner. We're sitting about a brand new gas station on Route 4. That's a really good point. Hey, yeah. if people want to get their cannabis and gas in a relatively short area, they should be able to. Uh, <laughs> in an ATM and, across and that is our tourist industry right now. People are coming from out of state to just come, put them out come before you just pump, to please. our stores. <laughs> I can tell you that because Blackberry Hills is bypassed now. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've been informed Maine is where you get the weed, and then Dover is where you get the glass. <laughs> yep, they do <laughs> have what? nice the glass. Head shops. Yes, they have the head shops. They have, you're, yeah. the, uh, what shop? Head, head shops. They call them head shops, smoke yeah. shops. Yeah, yeah. smoke Places shops. to purchase your items that you're Accessories. going to Accessories. We've left an opportunity on the table that we definitely are going to be making money on when we put in our Walmart of bongs <laughs> on the <laughs> floor. <laughs> Well, well yeah, Jerry, 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 I got a question. <laughs> Pat and Paul brought this up. The water in that area. Mm -hmm. That's the South Berwick Aquifer. They get their water for the town right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, so what we would yeah. have to look yeah. at was would be maybe potentially additional... Mm -hmm. Well, we could condition safety. annual testing or, yeah. Yeah. you know... Well, I mean, South Berwick should have a say because we're going through this and the development up in the industrial park. If well, it affects their that, resources. I, I don't right. think so. What because, the industrial clock? Um, the they're add, they want to add um, a housing development rate on the back side of it. On um, uh, 236 on, down? No. No, no. no. off Route of Route 4, four right off the industrial yeah. road. Industry, um, drive. industry oh, drive. Yep. Oh, at the next end of property? Yeah. Yep. 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 Right. But they want to use mm -hmm. the industrial road out to Route 4 for yeah. the people from the 50 housing development to come out through. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we so make them right put on, in right under the 50, 50 yeah. mile an hour road. Right well, and make the them put thing. our that road up to yeah. the new town standards right. too. Yeah. And exactly. You no, know, anytime they come might, across there, we, might be a good thing to add the turning lanes onto that. Well, no, that that for, we yeah, yeah, but the state won't do it. You know, right. is is they said, oh, if you guys want to do it, we're more than happy well, to no, help I'm, you. I'm saying and, we've had to meet with the with South Berwick with mm -hmm. them on this project because. Yeah. Our planning board has to approve it too. Maybe that needs to be something that you yes, can think about. No, those definitely. tanks have to be tested every year. Yep. Yep. And what happens? Yep. Like, how much is it, is it to remediate? Like, say they open for five years and then they close, and then those tanks are there, right? That had oil and gas. <clears throat> You're going to take them out. Yeah, that's a condition you could put into that too. Yeah. That, like, well, that's we've, that's we've, we've done that with solar, yep. and and I ideally you ask the applicant, you're like, okay, in future dollars, yeah. will you set aside money in yeah. a what, that what lose we, it in account or something? Yeah, in a, a uh, what kind of account did we call that? Escrow. It was that would cover escrow a, account if they did go bust, and and rather than the town having to come up with the brownfield, correct that they couldn't afford, so they put their that's already there. That would be so useful. The state pays for the for the no they, no, they put the it in the state, state owns it. Oh, so whoever the buys DEP, that, the DEP, the, they right. have to have that money right. in it's the in, account. It's in no, there. No, the state takes the money and keeps it in the account. Okay, they, they call it some sort of fund. I can't remember the wow. name of it. It's a fund. Yeah. So that's good. It's like the FBI and, and they have to have insurance yeah. too. Also, yeah. so the insurance will have to mm -hmm. right. take care of it. Yeah, sure. that's a good question. Mm -hmm. But yes, well, like for for one example, like our underground oil tank, we we got an alarm that. Our oil was leaking into a secondary confinement. So before it became a major, major issue of contamination, we were already aware that there was an issue. So like there's that's like an how, outer layer that... That's you know, how the right. tanks are built. I was actually... I just learned about that <laughs> today on my Boston detour this morning, but that's how gas tanks are built, is they have the, yeah. the single... The double walls. They have the single wall that holds your gas and then a secondary exterior with alarms and sensors in it. So that way, if anything, where the gas is Sorry, actually Billy. leaks, you know, and you can stop it before it gets thing. out and into the groundwater, yeah. into that. As long as everything works. Yeah. Like, the, the, that's part of We their, don't part never of have problems testing. as human beings. That's part of being <laughs> human. Into it, yeah. Sometimes yeah. things go wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, it's but that's, uh, that's one of the things that they have to test, and that's something that we can give some consideration yeah. to when we're mm -hmm. writing our conditions yep. yeah, for yeah. approval and whatever, mm -hmm. what have you. Yeah. We That's could it. have a train derailment, and then the tankers on those pollute more than a gas station. Hundred well, percent. Yep. Well, luckily, they don't. But they can't go very fast through there, at least. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's right next to the water. Yeah, That's true. <laughs> for a lot of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So. I have a contact for the South Berwick superintendent, water superintendent. So I, I talk with them for a couple of the projects. 
So I can forward that to the planning department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any good. other comments about the process for possible new gas stations, convenience stores, and the standards that we can impose? Thanks for the education on moratoriums. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, James. <laughs> All right, next item is uh, the edge update. Um, the uh, first building, the L-shaped building, um, they have, I think, tenants almost ready to fill it. So there's four there now. There's a salon, dental, spa, which is great. I got my teeth cleaned there a couple months ago. <laughs> um, they give you a discount? The primal fit. <laughs> 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 In the gym, so. They will now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a plug. Yeah. Um, so four businesses and a few more on the way. We uh, pause for. Bye, guys. Good night. Bye, Thank you. Good night. Thank you. <coughs> Building that's being built now is 10 one bedroom units and two commercial units. And so it's beautiful. We'll have. I mean, it looks nice from the outside for sure. Oh no, all the framing the is. Too. The framing is phenomenal. Nice. That's always good to hear. You know what? <laughs> well, mean, you, know. you can tell. You can tell. I told. I actually told James this after I went through and did the uh, rough framing. You can tell a lot about a company by the rough framing. Oh well, yeah. Well, yeah. Because. It, it it speaks to they I mean they're planning for the future use of that building. They're really like planning one hundred percent for all potential future inevitabilities. And that's worked with that company. Yeah. yeah. On other projects, Poland Springs mm -hmm. High School. Mm -hmm. They're great. Yeah. Awesome. That's they're, they're a good group of people. Yeah, they are a good group of people. It's yeah. it's absolutely beautiful. Sorry. That's why we have them. Oh, I was awesome. I was so happy about <laughs> going in there and seeing how good they did. There's a the next building they're working on. It will be a coffee drive through So you'll see the drive through get completed. They're actually going to work on building both of the roads out um, towards the end of this year. So and I believe there's even another building that will be started along the way. So major progress. That next building goes up on this side of the pump, <coughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's going to be uh, a Roma Joe's. Allegedly. A coffee it's going to be a coffee shop with a drive-thru. It's going to be a coffee shop with a drive-thru. Why did we not, why did we not condition that to be orange and pink? Come on, guys. I thought you loved me. Before you. <laughs> oh, okay. You're There's some, I mean, I don't get notes would do great over there too. Whenever I drive through that one by in Dover, it's like on a line into traffic. Oh, yeah, going around the summer's worth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. People love their coffee. Any, Just any got another right shop. time to hit them, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I always eat in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be some major infrastructure work happening over the next couple of years. They're upsizing the culvert to a box culvert to get the stream across, which will upsize our stormwater capacity for the next 100 years in the area. Um, we, have a, we have a drainage project to pick up from the end of the edge to get to the Salmon Falls River. So that'll, not, it'll, it'll pretty much be like uh, the old Sanford Road School Street project, except I don't believe we're gonna have an automatic light there. But uh -huh, uh -huh. just to give you an idea, it's crossing uh, from the edge, across Sawmill Hill, down um, Gateway Gas's second parking lot there to the, to the river. So that's happening this summer. Um, we're, making some good progress on underground utilities, coordinating with CMP, Consolidated Communications, and Comcast. So getting all the <coughs> entities together. And um, we're able to bring power from School Street, or from Sawmill Hill, and power in a way where we can backfeed some buildings to save a lot on costs and nice. keep the project pretty relatively <coughs> simple. Um, we met with the contractor and uh, project manager from Comcast, and they both worked on the new market project. So the new market projects, a lot of the ways what we kind of model what we're trying to go after. So to have- New market project? 
New Market, when they Frank worked on it and they brought all those utilities underground, yeah. um, the contact we have with Comcast and Consolidated Communications was part of that we're project. That. Yeah. And we're working on um, finalizing some grants and going after more funding in the short term. So that's what I got for the edge updates. Any questions? When are they looking for occupancy for the residential units? Is that coming up pretty quick, or I'm not sure when they. I I, I don't know off the top of my head, but they've. Um, I can get an answer on that for for eight main the one that was built. We That's that. That one's going to be residential, correct? The, yeah. the tall one that went up. Um, <laughs> I've only done rough framing, so they gotcha. still got their plumbing. They, they got a ways to go. They got they're a pretty, they're long, pretty good. Oh yeah, they're going back. fast, yeah. but they're. That's where they're at. I think actually, I think. I might have gotten an email from them to go in next week. They need maybe. to extend apartments to make the building work. Right. Mm -hmm. I know they've mentioned what their anticipated completion date is. I just forget. Off the top of my head. It's I mean, not I, like I, you don't have a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the big thing is kudos to you, James, with um, a lot of the grant funding, what you, what the town's been able to <coughs> capture in the last even 18 months of coming from the state and everything. So that's that's a huge win there. So you know. I think if you go back to YouTube, it was us sitting around in joint meetings talking about <laughs> Just what was to come. So a lot of the ways, just all this coming together and clarifying what the next steps are is a huge, huge help. How do we? How do we plan on? Uh, so, so my neighbor sold his cows, right? So he's all about milk and cows. How do we? How do we make sure that? Well, see that that continues as a farm in some sort of way or another, and set up a bunch of house lots. Someone Why buy we take it, a look at it and use it for a farm. farm mm -hmm. On Wentworth Road, it's about eight hundred. Eight lots for two hundred thousand dollars a piece. Eight Why lots, is yeah. that kept as open land? Why aren't we figuring out where to get the money to buy it? That's, that, a really that's good what question. we should be looking at. Yes, in a lot of instances. Mm -hmm. At least going back to what I was saying before, from from the surveys, people are very clear that that, that is part of the part of the deal. Not just part. It seems to be pretty high on people's lists. Yeah. I mean, obviously, what's happened downtown and all the work and all the focus. Going back to the 2013 survey, that that was the big one, right, with the 500 respondents, and a lot of it's about that. But I want to say most of it is about open space. It's about not overdeveloping. It's about being, yeah, keeping a rural, rural yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, small town vibes, all of that. And and people have been clear with that survey, with the 2019 survey, it's top of the list, and and. As part of the, the comp plan, one of the things that I keep coming up against, I think just generally, is, yeah, it'd be great to have a plan, but without a, 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 a pile of money to go around buying up that property, we really have to plan very carefully. You have to raise the money. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You have to raise the money, and it comes we, we have state, federal, and private sources. Yep. Well, we Absolutely. have $80,000 built back up in open space impact fees. What does that get you? Uh, yeah. Won't even get you Maybe five acres yeah. in today's well, market. You know, he, he he doesn't doesn't even lot. giving the guy a tax yeah. Yeah. You can't buy a, a property lot. Lot. On his taxes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we do, yeah. but we, we do that's give, that's I mean, we, we do have tax breaks for agriculture. You can buy non-biblical. But I mean, like, but I mean, like. paying 25 grand a year for growing trees. I mean, that's no good. The thing, the thing with property taxes is you know they have the they they have the open space taxes they have the farmland you know no subsidies and things but as a town we can't say that we're gonna value somebody else's property different than another person's property mm -hmm. no we as a town can't do that we can't say all right farmer a we're gonna tax you at Ten dollars per thousand, and homeowner B, we're going to tax you at twenty dollars. Well, aren't there agricultural exemptions? <coughs> of course. Yeah, there are. Yeah, but, yeah. but it's not, so not, not in the oh, not really? in the town. It's not, not not in the town though. Oh, you can't just just pick and choose. How these other towns do yeah. it? it I, I haven't heard of another way they can do it other than through the states. Mm -hmm. You know, through the state or the federal. Oh, I, or, I know no. And I've sat on the board of the board of directors for the Great Forks Regional Land Trust as well. Um, how to get tax breaks on land? Usually, there's a minimum lot size, so it's putting it into open space or current use, and it's like right. eight to thirteen acres, depending on where you are. Um, but that's the way to basically get that tax break and to get to preserve land. We worked on this a lot at the land trust. That's what they do. 
they don't have a lot of money to go out and buy land and preserve it either. Um, really, the way to do it is to have people who own the land that are Granted, stewards, story. stewards of the yeah, stewards of the land, and put easements on it to limit development. And that's the easiest way. It may be to incentivize them somehow. I'm not sure how. I'm sure towns have done it, but um, really, in yeah. in the past, it's, you know, Great Works Land Trust has a lot of properties in Berwick, and they work with private landowners and they raise money. But in the past, they have asked. We had warrant articles oh, in yeah, there, you know, to mm -hmm. to you no know, give money to them to yep. buy it, yep. you know, which is for the Great Works Land Trust. You know, they buy the land, but they continue paying their taxes. They don't; they're not required to because they're a nonprofit. But because they want to mm -hmm. work with the towns to promote this stuff, they still pay the property taxes. They're not; they're not tax exempt. Oh, they are, but they choose not to. How pay. many? How many of them have farms on them, though? Like North, most of them is just North green. Yeah, like, are you talking about here? No, 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 no. Like no. the land trust, how many of it are used as farms? A lot of that. Oh, are circles for one. Well, 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 quite, quite a few. That's only organic CSA, yeah. and that isn't all. Well, yeah, actually, I mean, that's a, that's yeah. not Great Works. That's a uh, uh, farm farm land trust. trust. No, that's, right. That's, right. That's, 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 no, what are they still milking cows on? Right. Where are they still milking cows? Well, so to my way of thinking, and from the little bit of energy and research I've been able to put into this. We have to take a multi-tier approach, and, and one of the things that it would be smart to do is to start to encourage farmers to come here. There are, there are places that put a lot of energy into encouraging people who are going to, to school in Orno or, or in the, uh, some of the ag schools in Vermont who are interested in, you know, stuff like, I always thought that if, if you know, the Dunn Farm became a creamery, that, that the people who are looking at property to put a creamery in. That's a, a great mm -hmm. place. And I'm not making a deal for Brett Dunn, but, but starting to make those connections for people and thinking about this in every way we possibly can seems to be the only way that you're going to save it because you can't, j even with the pot of money, you're not going to necessarily mm -hmm. solve it. Mm -hmm. You have to have 20 solutions and, oh, yeah, and yeah, spinning yeah. them up all at once. And you would still well, need somebebody who wants to run it. Right. Yeah. I mean, yes. 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 We're taking yeah. away it's one part. Yes. Yes. Finding somebody who actually wants to run the farm. Got a is. brewery by coming out and saying this town values this. Yeah. We want beer here. We and that's how we did it. And it's the same. Now, we have a problem now with the breweries because it, what is the cost for the sewer plant? You were talking about on a week ago mm -hmm. that the sewer plant is <coughs> too much money. So the brewery that wants to go across the street is is they're not game for it because I talked to. Uh, John Smith about it last Friday, about the, how, the, how those tanneries fees are so high they can't, it doesn't work. They put another brewery. Those guys over there are crying. Yeah. So what, that's what we should be talking to is the, the shit plan. Get that straight now. Find out why. You, James, you know why. Uh, I think but wait, uh, before we get off to the brewery, let's just finish <laughs> the thought about the farms for a second. <laughs> sure. I did just, and you're right, it's important. No, but, but we do, we, we, I, I just want to say that, that that we have to we have to put that intention out there, yeah. and then we have to start hustling. Right. Right. We gotta let people know we want we every instrument this town has to encourage, and, and I'm saying young farmers, but I mean new farmers, and any way that we can compete mm -hmm. with other towns where somebody's looking to set up shop, whether it's a brewery or a creamery, or they want to grow organic vegetables or whatever it is at every level, whatever instruments we have. To be helpful and get out of the way of that is is that's the best thing we can do right now. I think. Yeah, and then once we start that, and once a few businesses hear about it and they come in, and it works great. It's going to just be self fulfilling. Well, let's hope. Keep, that's going to keep working. Well, if let's it hope. Works out. Yeah. We, we also have almost a cap on livestock too. You can only have a certain amount per acre. Cap per acre. Right. I think in the. I don't think it applies to R three. It doesn't apply to R three. Yeah. How come there's one on livestock? Yeah, in R2 and R1. Yeah, like you can't have roosters in, in, in R1. Yeah. Yep. I, if it was up to me, I would say, you know, that's yeah. not, yep. that's not yeah. an issue. Yeah, I, yep. I, I've Nicole seen that, that in kill towns yeah, in California. Because there was pigs right. in R1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Downtown, there was like, like 10 pigs in that. But for livestock, if you want to watch out for how they put out a carbon footprint, yeah, yeah. well, if you start mixing their feed with red seaweed, 
that brings their carbon footprint down or bumps next to nothing. Well, yeah, even just rotationally grazing them yeah. makes a huge difference. That adds Could be more to the soil. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just Jared to throw things out across over here. <laughs> to Mark's point, I probably shouldn't say what I'm about to say, but <laughs> I've been Why approached by two lawyers with letters wanting to buy my land in South Pearl. And when I asked why, I was given the answer that they want my land, which is, it can't be developed, but they want it for open space to do something else mm -hmm. and have that open space. Mm -hmm. And I have bought duns. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. You bought the mother there, yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying this is what I was told. This was just within the last two months. Mm -hmm. Send them over. <laughs> <laughs> but my land in South Berwick is going to the Great Works Land Trust. I'm well, just mine's going nowhere right now, but I would like to talk to them and find out what it is. Yeah. Can they ever call you? Well, I know what it is. Tell me. No, let me know now. Okay, he'll do it outside <laughs> the workshop. Outside <laughs> 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 the door, please. I can do it right now. Yeah. I do it. Yeah. But I, I, my hands are tied in a lot of instances because yeah. of the business. Yeah. You know, oh, you can do what? But. Preserve it forever. Yeah. Talk to you know, Great Works Land Trust. Yeah. No, they it, don't have enough money. Yeah. But I don't you can give it to them right now. I don't know if I can survive. And that's what most and that's part of the problem. Steve Brown is selling house the town steps up and says, Okay, we can get this much money this, mm -hmm. to put it into a trust. Right now it's gonna go into a foundation. But the foundation I don't have to pay taxes if it goes into a foundation, but even still I'm not sure that that's the right way. I don't know. Oh, I, I, I'll speak from personal experience. My family, you know, put off um, 120 acres in in a trust with the Great Works Land Trust, right. um, and for us, it's worked great. Is we still get to use the land, we still harvest the wood off it, we still use it for firewood, and we lease out the field to a farmer, you know, Charlie Bear from South Berwick, and you know, with 120 acres is our taxes are minimal because it's either in farmland or open space or forestry or whatever. And, you know, like the, the big parcel is, I think it's like $500 a year, taxes, you know. So is anybody out there looking to do this is you can do this and still use your land. You oh, don't yeah, have to yeah. give it up. No. So is... But you give it up to only do a certain thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, you, well the, the right. You can you can't develop it. You can. But right. is that if we're gonna I mean, if people want to buy these big parcels of land and they want to develop them into multi housing, multi lot things, um, you know, we can talk about in terms of conditions of use or land use ordinance that that an equal amount of the land has to be kept open or trees or you know whatever it is currently you know as just a means of. Not having everything overdeveloped, you know. Sure, but a lot of times with that's hard with farmland. Though. The front yeah. of it, if you want to keep farmland, yeah. you, you kind of have to have the right neighbors for it too. Right. No, not too many people in a big development are going to want cows or livestock. <laughs> next uh, spreading the stream with right. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I mean, oh. and the sad thing is, is as time goes by, the population is increasing. More people are coming from. Yeah. Massachusetts, yeah. New Hampshire. Well, I mean, one of the things we can do. Anything we can, we can, we can do. We can undo later if needs be. But I'm just saying. I don't know. That's true. Well, <laughs> with, with, no, with, 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 yeah. You mean as far as ordinances? Yeah, in, terms of, in terms of ordinances, I mean. But mm -hmm. but well, I, I'm just saying do. that if if the concern is you know that we I mean obviously farm getting farmers and and maintaining farmland is is one aspect, but also. If overdevelopment and losing rural charm is the the concern, then we can find a way to make that a condition of these developments where they you know well, keep equal well, space plus, open. Plus the development, yeah, you know, yeah. Is, yeah. But, but that's not being fair to the landowner, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's where right. Noah. That that's the problem. That's called if being. We want to keep uh, that. We have to pony up with the bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not because saying it. Well, to be fair, any condition we place on any building. Is unfair to the landowner. They should be able to do whatever they want to. No, nope. but we, no, but we have, but we have no. limits. And I'm just saying that as a town, if collectively we say rural charm is very important to us, then as a town we can vote in land use ordinance, which says if you're going to put in a big development, 
you better you know have equal space that you're keeping open as part of that development. Don't so we that we're not in space now. Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm not saying that that's the way we go. I'm just saying that it's an option that's available to us. So we, to, we don't lose our world charm. Not, not to throw one more thing on Envision, but uh, Jeremy, I mean, that, like you said, be intentful. Maybe that might be something with, with the farmer's market or anybody that you see it, just outreach or find that contact and be like, hey, this is what we find want in town. Wants to we lease have it. farmers that find are trying someone to, that wants to rent that field. Move in I mean, see if there's a way to just build that network. We, we yeah. used to have Maine Trout Land you know. Trust, but we don't have that anymore. Well, they still have yeah. small woodlot owners in Maine, too. Yeah. And so I've seen that in other trust. communities where uh, once you page, cut it all the way allow back. them to get their hooks into it, there's a it's a pretty significant tax exemption, but you have to let them come in and log it every so many years. And you can't develop it, but you can keep it natural you know and let it regrowth tree regrowth and yeah that maine does have a program for that so <clears throat> that's stuff for people to think about but it does limit what you can do with your land but it does also protect the land that it can't be developed so yeah no so, but, but yeah and critical. if it's up in front somebody knows prior to buying it this is absolutely the condition. You know, that they're was making the whole reason i didn't buy a home is because i had that yeah. yeah yeah so they're they're making that choice that they know that that's Correct. the condition of it already and that could be something that you know you're still going to attract the right people if we if we find the right network. Yeah, that, you know, where you're giving somebody a choice, but it's also protecting what we want to protect in town. I mean, just generally, does everybody kind of? I mean, I I know some of you. I don't know others of you. Where is everybody's in in terms of following the 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 tone of the citizens? Where's everybody's head at with with? With kind of our our mission again, I'm on the comp plan, right? That's 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 setting our goal. Well, for next. Uh, it's not done yet. <laughs> it's not. We're still going through it. No, but again, and comp plan is what thirty years yeah. old. Thirty yeah. years, years old, and it's been four years since it's been like trying to get updated. Twenty thirteen. It gets a little steam, and then it slows down. We did one in twenty nineteen. Oh, was the last too? last really big survey? But you you can get the tone of the people all you want, but we see it all the time when we go on these site walks, right? You got a guy who's he's not getting any younger, mm -hmm. and what's his legacy going to be for his family? Mm -hmm. And and case in point, several developments within this town. I'm going to sell this to a developer, and he's going to subdivide mm -hmm. it, and he's going to make lots, and yep. it's and it's their right to do that with Absolutely. their land. I, I so the reality the, is, uh, I'm I sorry, I don't want to be the jerk face here, but that's kind of. The reality is yeah. that's the reality. You You're going to have it. developers that come yeah. in with big money, yep. mm -hmm. and if that landowner, if I'm if I'm seventy something years old, and and I want to go retire in Florida, and I want to leave a legacy for my kids, what am I going to do? I'm going to sell that land to a developer. I'm going to take that money and run. And you can't fault people for doing that. Sure. They want to go still, retire. We can still hold the developer's feet to the fire. Absolutely, the with the green space, hundred percent, open space, hundred percent. But I don't fault right, people for selling stuff. their assets to retire. I can't make them. I can't force them to farm on the land. You could, you could perhaps. Make it so they could, or maybe right? try and oh, yeah, no, maybe try right. and incentivize <coughs> homesteading Correct. and small, Correct. small market yes. farms. Yes. I mean, it's that an agrarian lifestyle built right. into the and again, which and I think that would enrich well. the community a lot more yeah. than just having one big monoculture farm. And again, that's where I think yeah. leveraging and vision on that is you know that's that you can put that out there. This is a farm friendly town, and you kind of try to. Recruit those people to buy Somewhat that land to come in. Yeah. As long as it's yeah. in our three, yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 Which R three is pretty big. I mean, there's a plenty of there's plenty of room. In but R3. you know, try to leverage so that you're getting the right people to buy that land. Right. Yeah, you know, versus that's, somebody else. That's the, like the code creed. I hate <laughs> to say this, and and we generally don't say it. We think it a lot more than we say it. If you wanted the view, you should have bought it. Mm -hmm. So. Because in mm -hmm. the code perspective, the code world, the town has set out their zones. Yep. This is what was determined. This is what is acceptable. And if it's acceptable there, then so be it, because that's what the town decided. Mm -hmm. So basically, if you want to keep that view open, you need to find some way for somebody to buy it, donate it, mm -hmm. give it to the town. Because if it comes through, mm -hmm. like Phil was saying, Somebody wants to sell it and develop it. It may not be what we sitting here want to see, but per yep. the zoning, I that's what the town wants. Yeah. <laughs> so I do love talk it. about the one lot. My neighbor exactly. was like, "I almost bought it," and I was like, "Now somebody else is like, <laughs> yeah. but that's what it is." It's well, and, then, not, and I, 
I, I could have stopped that. I could have bought it. Front <laughs> communities, and that's the, kind yep. of the reality. Is if you want the view, you should have bought it. Yeah. It's that's a slow motion train been. crash mm -hmm. yes. that we're all living <laughs> yes. while we yep. watch our town <laughs> exactly become populated. Mm -hmm. Not just populated, but densely but populated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's coming. perverted in. I mean, like changed into something that it wasn't. Well, yeah, yeah. everything um, changes into something that it wasn't eventually. Yeah. <laughs> but not, I mean, like some places do don't. Though so. some places have the money to prioritize no. those things or make plans to like. Well, I mean, like, not for nothing. Some places build an economy around what they have that's driving them, and it may just be that we don't, you know, like. Like the Duns stopped milking, right? So why did the Duns stop milking? Well, because they're part of a bigger milk system that we weren't able to like shift and prioritize in a different way. And there's a lot of reasons for it. It's not arbitrary. And I think with a lot of this stuff, some places, and I'm not saying I wish I'm here, right? I love this place. This is where I want to raise my family, and I chose it. But there are places where dairies become creameries. And, and local food systems are prioritized, and, and, and whether it's at a uh, local government uh, uh, level or because people have a lot of money for fancy cheese, I, I, you know, I'd imagine it's a combination. But They're spending it on fancy weed, so we're not going to get <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you can promote it, I'm sure it's a post weed munchie. Oh, man. Unless Maybe. you get the munchies, then you want yeah. the fancy yeah. cheese. you got to figure it out. Way yeah. 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 Prioritize Fancy fresh food with your fancy fresh weed all from You need to like the <laughs> organic deep fried Gouda for the. <laughs> we nice to have a farmer's market in town that's open all the time somewhere. You okay. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not what we have upstairs here, which is fine, but just. Mm -hmm. More An problems. actual market. Well, so we get a call going or something. Care what yeah. we have. These guys across the street have opened a, 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 a butcher yeah. and, and market yeah. that is. Locally owned, it's not part of a corporate conglomerate, and and they want to support local. We should all be shopping there. Oh yeah, that is. Yeah. We are so lucky to have them. Yeah, and we, we should better be make sure that they expand and always do good business because yep. that that is exactly where our head is. Yep. If it doesn't survive, then shame on us. Yes, absolutely, exactly. absolutely. But to say we're ninety minutes in, I think that's a good time and way to. We should start thinking about next steps. Um, I think we want to work on marijuana ordinances. We want to shop local. We want to <laughs> work on gas station standards. Mark touched upon, I think, revisiting the um, sewer fees. And I think we should be approaching the sewer district to ask them for a consumption-based equivalent drilling unit um, to add to their fee schedule. Um, we, we should be looking closely at our open space plan farm farmland protection there's also things in the comprehensive plan um that get get fed in the land use ordinance to protect scenic vistas so we identify them and put them on a map the more we lay it it's like lay, layers just like a uh, farming economy is going to be built on layers um same thing with protecting our moral character um is there anything i missed and and i'll just last thing i'll just add is we can put a pencil on the calendar for June 27th. That way it won't go yeah. another yep. yeah. what day two years. Call. What day of the week is that? Um, it's a Thursday. No, okay. <laughs> I think it's a Tuesday. Wednesday. I think it's a fourth. Oh, shh. Hold on. <laughs> I think I scheduled it, it on a, a select board meeting. <laughs> no, 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 because the, the select board's going to change to the first and third in June. So that'll be an open Tuesday for us. See, I did that on purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The work. Sure, yeah, it's subconsciously. You did it on purpose. Is that the fourth it. Tuesday? It'll be the fourth yeah. Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, because so June is when we flipped back to the first and third for a slot board, so that one will work for us. June 27th is a Tuesday. All right, that should work out just fine then. 6.30? Because I just put it in my calendar. Yeah. So. Mm. James, if I could just <laughs> add one one piece. I, I just want It's important to me, and I think it's important in, in us conducting the town's business, that, that we approach things with a level of civility and professionalism. Um, and the only reason I bring that up is, you know, in the in the past couple of weeks, I've had I've asked some difficult questions, but I've framed those questions in a manner that was seeking information, and those questions were met with, in in some cases, a, a hostile um, and confrontational dialogue. And I just think, in our professional decorum, 
uh, as we carry out the town's business, I, don't, I really don't think there's any place for that. And I'm always going to conduct myself as a, as a professional. I'm not going to get heated. There's nothing worth getting heated about in here. We, we can have a difference of opinion and be professionals. So uh, I think we should all take that pledge to, to just be professional with each other and carry out the town's business as professionals because the going on camera and calling people out, it's, it's not reasonable. If you have a problem with somebody, address it with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'm an approachable guy. I, I know what my stature sometimes is off-putting to some people, but I'm an approachable guy, and I'm, I'm willing to have that difficult discussion. So if you have a, an issue with something I said, come talk to me. We'll have a reasonable discussion. But raising your tone, being hostile, that's, that's not it. So I'll just leave it with that. I appreciate it. We are all public servants. Mm -hmm. Do we still get the jerky to this chance? I thought you were going somewhere else with that. That's going to get weird. <laughs> <laughs> you're the other one weird. making it weird. <laughs> Any you're further comments, <laughs> questions, non-agenda items? Motion to adjourn? Yep. Seconded. All those in favor? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. It's been great.